It's Z on 947. It's called The Middle. 25 minutes after 5, coming to you live from Monte Casino. So there's a brand new thrilling South African crime drama. It debuts on Netflix on the 29th of March. It's called Unseen. And the leading lady joins us live in studio. Ladies and gentlemen, Gail Mabalani! <laughs> I think the first time uh, we got a sneak peek of this brand new thriller was last year, end of last year. Netflix did a yes. preview of what's to come in 2023 yes. and you were part of the panel. Yes. And you spoke about how you were so excited to be doing a role that's completely different. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, with my 10 years in the industry, my roles have been very safe to a degree. Mm-hmm. So this is the first time I'm getting to really, you know, just sink my teeth into something this yeah. intense and I'm really excited. What was the most intense part? I think the emotion, um, Mm. you know, Zenzi goes through the most, I mean the most. And, you know, of the 70 days that we filmed, I was on set probably 65 of those days, 12 hours. And so you constantly just in that space every day, Mm. you know, until you're done uh, filming. So I think that the hardest part was just carrying all those emotions. Tell us about what Unseen is actually about. So Unseen follows, you know, Zenzi Lemwale played by myself. Um, yes, queen, as, leading yes. lady. Yes. <laughs> this is my first leading role, yes. guys. So I'm um, really yes. excited. I mean, come on with it. Oh, man. Thank long, you. Long overdue, but oh. le- le- we'll get into that. Let's yes. talk about Unseen. So Unseen follows the story of Zenzi Mwale who goes on this journey to find her missing husband and in the process, you know, um, finds herself in very compromising situations. So her husband Max, played by Vuya Dabula, mm. unfortunately dabbled in the, the world of crime and dodginess mm-hmm. and she finds herself in those spaces and with very dangerous characters and unfortunately she's having to fight for herself and for her life and for her family. Hectic. I yes. mean, we said leading lady, this is your first one. That's hard to believe. We saw you on The Wild, right? We saw you on the road yes. um, these were also sort of the beginning of a new caliber of production in South Africa but of yeah. course having worked on shows like Blood and Water yes. that is yes. almost like Charles play no. <laughs> <laughs> at the time it was brilliant at yeah. the time it was it was right up there mm. um, and I think I'm grateful to always have been exposed to that and I think it's also nice to sometimes just be you know, somewhat part of an ensemble cast yeah. and be in the background and when the time is right you know everything falls into place and the time was right this time yes. you were leading the likes of Rapulana Seipemo, Ilse Klink, Dineo Olanga. Yes. What was that like? A lot of pressure. Yeah. Uh, being um, a lead on any show is very demanding. It takes, you, you understand that you you carry the energy for the show. You Every time you come to set, you bring along with you um, the whole cast and crew. Mm. Um, and I mean, you would know. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah. Just waking up, you've got basically on all day, 12 hours a day, every day. And you have to show up every day. You're not filming in sequence. Correct. And you have to remember where your character was. The scene I before. mean, doesn't that make you a little bit more entrenched in the story? Don't you find that when you're playing support roles, you sort of get lost. Yeah. You're also allowed to like not care as yes, much. Yes, it's true. <laughs> I mean, not that you don't care, but yeah. you have room not to care. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know? But when you are the lead, you carry everything mm. about the show. So you even making sure that everybody is following the story and we're all on the same page. And, you know, we shot this scene the other week and you went here and yeah. we shot it with this character. Yeah. So can we try it this way? So it does make you just a little bit more protective mm. of the story. We're hanging out with Gail Mabilane. Unseen streams on Netflix on the 29th of March. More on that. And of course, your brand new hair Range. It's yes. not that brand new anymore because yes. it's now award it's gonna winning. Be one. We're going to talk about it next. It's uh, Becky Hill, David Guetta. Remember, on 947 Unseen streams on Netflix on the 29th of March. Gail Mabelane is in studio. <laughs> That's right. The last time we saw you was uh, on Blood and Water. Yes. Uh, season two of Blood and Three. Water. Three of yes. Blood and Water. What was that entire experience like? I think we've got such an inc- incredible crew and cast that works on Blood and Water. Every time we go back, it's like we're just it's just a big family re- reunion. I'm sure mm. even with you, I mean, I've seen you know how to ruin Christmas and it just looks like one fat party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and it's exactly the same. I mean, I love the, my Blood and Water family. Uh, speaking of family, yeah. you're juggling both, right? Yes. Your, your actual family yes. and your work. Mm. What's that like? I imagine it's not an easy thing. I mean, we're talking off air about, you know, the prospects of motherhood and I'm just like, hey, sign me out. <laughs> <laughs> 
It makes everything so rewarding though. Mm. I mean, I before I came here, I had a couple of interviews online today and then I had to rush to my daughter's biathlon because she had a biathlon and watch her. They had a parent race and I was like, no, I've gotten into it. I don't want to get all sweat. I'm like, no. I made all kinds of excuses. We would have understood. No. <laughs> I saw a very competitive mom. So I was like, yes. no, not today. But um, it was, it, it's really, it's rewarding. It makes mm. everything worth it. Everything we we fight so hard to achieve, everything we, we work so hard to attain, it makes it all worth it. Mm. I always see videos of, of you and your daughter on Instagram. She's yes. very loud and very yes. like, she's like very out there. Yes. If she decides to go into this, would you be good with that? I would. I think I'd offer her support. You mm. know, I've, I got into the industry when I was much older. So I'd want for her to start younger and to really, but I think for now, I just wanted to be a kid. Yeah. You know, she said to me the other day, I said, what do you want to be when you grow up? And she said, mm, I want to be a kid. And I'm like, yes, girl. Aww. She is <laughs> oh, wise yes. beyond no, her years. Yeah. Yeah. And she knows adulting is real, you know. Yeah. But I think I would support her. I don't have a choice if that's what she wants. And, and, and by the looks of it, she's already... You know, yeah, more it looks of like creative it. and very much a performer, very extroverted mm. and very different from me. You're very vocal in sharing sort of your personal life. You're also very vocal in sharing your journey with alopecia. Mm. Um, tell us about how you felt it was important for you to open up about that. So when I washed my hair in the studio, and I mean in the in the salon, and I had this. Big, I mean, you can wash your hair in the studio. No, listen, I'll bring a, I'll bring a basin <laughs> next time. And I had this big huge hole on my head the size of a big tomato mm. red and inflamed I was so scared but at the same time I was like oh my gosh I wonder how many women go through this and the moment I shared it and so many women then came personally to me via DM or whatever sharing their experiences I just felt like I wanted to be part of the solution mm. and wanted to be part of a group of women really that made it okay to talk about this it's so real Yeah, it is so prevalent yeah. especially amongst black women we don't talk about it we hide it under the wigs we, we cover it up mm. We're so scared. I had a woman who said to me once that she's getting married in a month and her husband doesn't know she has no hair. So she puts on a duck in the morning, early, and at night again, no. she quickly puts on. And I was just like, that is not, you know, that is not a way to live. And then look at God, because comes a, a problem or what seemingly looks like a problem yes. leads to um, the birth of an incredible brand in yes. ethnogenics. Yes. Tell us about that journey. That was just it's like my third baby. You know, I, I know I said I don't want to have more babies. So I actually have three babies. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, it was just, it's so close to my heart. And I think the exciting thing about it is it was really just birthed to help solve a problem mm. and to see it do as well as it is doing and helping so many women with their regrowth and, you know, just educating around yeah. hair loss and natural hair and what You're being very do. modest. It's the number one brand in premium hair care, yes. also number one in hair care online. What? So you can't just say it's just doing so well. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, thank you for saying <laughs> that. <laughs> I was just trying to be, you know. But I think uh, it's really just a testament to the heart that's behind it, you know. Mm. It wasn't, if it, if it does well, it's great. But the heart behind it is just really wanting to be part of the solution and offering women support and help. And that's been incredible to see it do as well as it does. But it seems like everything that you do is from the heart because everything that you touch turns to gold. Uh, and you're just an absolute wonder to watch. Congratulations oh, on it. So Another much. successful series. Ladies and gentlemen, Gail Mabalani! <laughs> 947 Drive with Tando. This is 947.